In the matter of personal development, learn the story of the seasons. There's three parts, though, to personal development. Here they are. Number one, the physical part. Herbalife's extraordinary products, both for nourishment, maintaining your weight control, nourishing the body, now dermogenics for the outside. First part of personal development is physical. Here's an important thing to remember. The, the body and the mind work together. You might have ideas, you might have ambition, things you want to accomplish, but here's what the body has to be, a good support system to make your dreams come true. That's why Herbalife plays such an incredible role in its nourishment, giving you the health, giving you the vitality, giving you the energy, giving you the vigor. One ancient phrase said this, treat your body like a temple, something you take extremely good care of. Mark got interested in that all those years ago and has never deviated from that. The best to nourish the body. Why? You got to have a good physical support system if you want to make your dreams come true. Sometimes you wake up in the morning, the mind says, let's go get them. And the body says, I can't get out of bed. You just got to say, body, that's the last time. I'll walk you around the block until you got the muscles. I'll take you to the gym until you're strong. I'll... You know, put an extra couple of shakes down you until you get vital and fit. I'm telling you. Nourish the body. Habits you've got that are going to be destructive, I'm telling you. Minimize those to the best of your ability so that you'll have a body that will take you places you want to go. Make your dreams come true that'll have the vitality and the power, the influence. Now there's another part to the physical, and that's physical appearance. Not only should you look good or feel good, you gotta look good. Physical appearance, I'm telling you, is part of, part of success. You say, well, people shouldn't judge you by your appearance. Let me give you a clue. They do. They do. Now, of course, when people get to know you, they'll judge you by more than what they see. But at first, they're going to take a look. And here's some of the best advice I've got. Make sure the outside of your physical appearance is a true reflection of the inside. Make sure you work on that. As you appear on the outside, let that be a good indication of what's going on in your heart, what's going on in your head, what's going on in your soul. So take care of the physical. Now here's the second part, the spiritual. I'm not here to win anyone to my point of view, but I do happen to believe in human spirituality that we're not just animals, an advanced form of the animal kingdom. We're a special creation. <clears throat> I happen to be a believer. I'm not here to persuade you to my personal belief. But if you are a believer, don't neglect, study and practice your spirituality. Pay attention. Let it grow. Let it be a vital part of your life and your future. Don't neglect. Key phrase. One of the greatest reasons why people don't have what they want, they simply neglect. They neglect the small things. They neglect the details. They neglect daily operation. They neglect consistency. Don't let neglect grab you by the throat, keep you in the shadows while others are walking into the sunlight. And here's an important one. one number one, don't neglect nourishment. Number two, don't neglect physical experience. Appearance and number three, don't neglect your spirituality. Now, here's the next one that's the mind. One of the reasons we came to this extravaganza was to celebrate, yes, it was to exchange ideas, yes, it was to get to know each other, yes. But here's one of the most important reasons for being at extravaganza, and that was to have a mental feast, things to ponder. There's an ancient script that says humans cannot live on food alone. And here was the addition to that statement, humans cannot live just on food. Animals can, dogs can, alligators can, spiders can. But humans cannot live just on food. Here's what it says. Humans also have to have words, words that nourish the mind. 
words that nourish the soul, words that nourish the spirit. And I've been so pleased as I've sat here day after day from the planning meetings to the president's team to the chairman's class to all of the training that's gone on here the last two or three days, you have had an incredible diet of good words. I'm asking you to treasure those words. I'm asking you to let those words affect your thoughts. Let it affect your mind. Let it affect your goals. Let it affect your intensity for the future. Good words. Words, one ancient prophet said, are like a lamp for your feet so you can see where to walk and a light for your pathway so you can see where to go. Thank God for the words that formulated Mark's dream 15 years ago. Thank God for the training of the president's team that crisscrossed the world. Thank God for every class that's being held on Saturday morning, the training classes, words that are spread out now all around the world, words of hope, words of encouragement, words of life. Let your mind be fed with all good words. And then here's the next one. Make sure you deliver good words. There's people in the dark until you get there with your words. People will be unhealthy until you arrive. They won't know where to go until you come and show them the way. A lot of people are going to be lost until you're out there saying, hey, I've got a light. Come my way. I can show you how to get out. I can show you how to get out of a bad situation. I got a way out. And let your words shine. Let your words be life. Let them be bread and let them be light. You're the light of the world. Next subject, personal development. Some of the things Mr. Shove taught me starting at age 25, some things came quickly, some things came easily. Setting goals, that was easy. We're going to talk about that uh, later on. But this one I had to struggle with, personal development. It was hard for me to give up my old blame list. It was so comfortable blaming the government and blaming my negative relatives and the company, company policy, unions, wage scale, economy, interest rates, prices and circumstances and all that. That was difficult for me to give up. That was quite a transition for me to make and blaming myself. But Mr. Shove started out with something very, very important. Let me give that to you. He said, it's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens, happens to us all. He said, the key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do about it. And he said, if you will start that process of change, do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. And then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take, blaming yourself instead of the marketplace. Taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission. And this one was a little tough for me. So let's talk a little bit about personal development, that extraordinary adventure I undertook starting at age 25. And I've never ceased that adventure. I'm still going for it in the 90s. I want to get better and better. I want my craft to get better, my business operations to get better, the things I do to get better. Because once I put this simple formula, I'm telling you it's easy to figure out where the problem is if you go to work on it. Now let's talk about personal development. And in helping kids understand personal development, I always start with money. Now, money's not the only place to start. Money certainly isn't the only value, but we've all got to start somewhere, and money's something you can count. Right? Kids are interested in money. Okay? A lot of things are a little tougher to measure, but economics is pretty easy, right? Because you can count. 
Okay, somebody says, how are you doing? So I don't know, let's count. Now this is not the only count. I understand that. There's a lot of other things to count, but to see if there may be some errors in your judgment and lack of disciplines in your life, we might as well start with money because it's so easy to count. So let's just start there and see whether or not maybe we have messed up. Okay. So here's how I explain it to kids. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Key to understanding economics. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Marketplace is also described as reality. Reality, the marketplace. Now, it takes time. It takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but we don't get paid for time. It's very important for kids to understand, as well as adults. We don't get paid for time. Mistakenly, the man says, well, I'm making about $20 for an hour. Not true. Not true. If that was true, you could just stay home, have them send your money. No, it's not true. You don't get paid for the hour. You get paid for the value you put in the time. So we don't get paid for time. We get paid for value. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of the afternoon. Is it possible to become twice as valuable and make twice as much money in the same time? Is it possible to become three times as valuable as you now are and make three times as much money in the same time? Is that possible? Of course. If you want to really emphasize something, that's a good phrase to it. Of course. Of course. Now, all you have to do to earn more money in the same time is simply become more valuable. America's unique. It's a ladder to climb. Starts down here, what? About $4 an hour? Big argument last year in Congress about the starting place. Should be five, should be five, should be five. Well, no, it doesn't need to be five. Why not start with four? It's a ladder, right? This is not a bed. This is a ladder. It's a ladder to climb. Starts at $4. Now, somebody says, well, should be five, should be five. Well, maybe. If you're going to stay at the bottom for the rest of your life, it probably should be five. But that's kind of a pitiful way to live. Start and not grow. Start and not change. Start and not become more valuable. Hey, the whole scenario of life is to start, number one, and what? Become more valuable, number two. So America is a ladder to climb. Starts at $4 an hour, and the more valuable you become, you just keep moving up the ladder. Top income last year, what, $52 million? Guy that runs Disney? Would a company pay somebody for one year's work $52 million? And the answer is... Of course. This is one of those of course places. Of course. If you help a company make a billion dollars, would they pay you 52 million? The answer is, of course. It's chicken feed. I mean, it's not much money. Now, why that much money? Because he has become so valuable. Now, why would we pay somebody only $4 an hour? They're not very valuable to the marketplace. Now, we've got to make that distinction to the marketplace. Might be a valuable brother, a valuable member of the community, valuable member of the church, valuable member in the sight of God, to the human family, of course, those kind of values. But to the marketplace, which is called what? Reality. Reality is, if you're not very valuable, you don't get much money. Those are called... The facts. I mean, that's how that is. Well, then how do you get more money? Simple answer. Somebody says, well, I'll go on strike for more. Well, here's a major problem with that. Here's a major problem with that. You can't get rich by demand. Somebody says, well, I'm waiting for a raise. I'm telling you, it's easier to climb. 
than to wait for a raise. Why not just become more valuable rather than wait? I'm telling you, that's the key to all good things. Becoming more valuable. Why would we pay somebody $400 an hour? They've become more valuable to the marketplace. See how this works? I'm telling you, this stuff is so easy. This is America. This is a ladder. How far is it from four to five? I'm telling you, it's not far. Four to five dollars an hour? If you work for McDonald's, haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. If you whistle while you haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. I'm telling you. You'll get an extra dollar just for a good attitude. Yay, McDonald's. Wear the hat. It's incredible. Five dollars. And then you just keep becoming more valuable, more valuable, more valuable. I got a telephone call five years ago. Company said, we're ready to expand internationally. We need some help. I was sort of semi-retired. Right? Looking for the next exotic beach. They said, no, no, Mr. Rohn. We got a project for you. Right? We're going to expand internationally. We could use your help. Next little while, we'll add a some millions to your fortune, make it worth your while. I said, okay. I thought later, isn't that interesting that they called me? My second thought was, of course they'd call me. Who else would they call? I mean, you know, I can get the job done. Now, how come? How come I got a telephone call worth millions? I had become valuable. Now, I'm a farm boy from Idaho. I was raised in obscurity. One year of college, and I thought I was thoroughly educated. Made all kinds of mistakes galore. At age 25, the creditors are calling me saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I got pennies in my pocket. I got nothing in the bank. I'm behind on my promises. How come I get a telephone call five years ago and it's worth millions? I changed. I changed. I turned my life around. Is it possible to become worth millions? Speaking economically, now there's a lot of values to become. But let's just talk economics. Is it possible to become that valuable? And the answer is, of course, of course. Now, let me give you the secret. She said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late. I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my cell. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. <laughs> and start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, Make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income. And economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on yourself and develop the skills. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces. All of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing. Not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy. Work on your attitude. Work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you.
Hey there, welcome to my channel Future Inspirational. Today I speak Motivation Discipline. Do now, of course, when people get you, they all judge you by more than going to take a look and hear some and of the sure outside of your physical appearance is true reflection of the inside makes you rework on that as you appear on the outside going to on in your hairs ongoing in your soul so take care of the physical now here's the second part the spiritual i am not win anyone view but i don't happen believe in human spiritually when not just animals and advance from the animal kingdom happen to be to my personal belief and but if you are a believer don't neglect study and uh, practice your spirituality pay attention let it grow let it be a vital part of your life and your future don't neglect keepers one of the reasons why people don't have they neglect the small things neglect the operation the neglect consistency don't let neglect grab shadows while others are talking sunlight number one don't neglect nourishment number experience appearance and number there don't neglect here's the next one that's the mind one of reasons we came to this and was a celebrate yes it was to exchange ideas yes it was but here's one of the most important reason for a exchange first things to pond and first things to pond there's ancient 